no golf game. I always wanted to do that. Except for I wanted to be playing a guitar while I did it. So uh, I'm really happy to be back in Minneapolis. Actually, I, I was telling somebody, does anybody know where Lund Boat Headquarters is? Yes. Where? Yes. New York Mills, Minnesota. Oh, and I thought, yeah, what is it called? New York Mills, Minnesota. Oh, that's that town. I don't know. So I spoke at their yeah, annual fun. conference and I drove little 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 rented a car here and drove out wherever they are. And it was both in the scene of yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, little but I mean, what is it? Little Falls. I think it was Little Falls. It is Little Falls. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I see that old ride, whatever it is, 35 out there. Whatever. Anyway, I can't waste any time. I already wasted time. I have lots of slides to go through. And uh, as Aaron said, this is really practical. That is my style. Um, I, uh, I guess I should have been a teacher. I'm starting to realize it would be easier. I, uh, whenever I present, uh, it's usually in a very teaching educational format. I teach lots of workshops, which I'll talk about. That's the only closed slide I have near the end. Uh, also, the plan is uh, I'm going to wrap all four of these books at the end, and that's what those cards are for, that if you don't have one of these, uh, Aaron, I think, or somebody has one, if you want to fill it out, to, to get into the wrap for one of these books, that'd be great. And now I need to keep rolling. I uh, talked about the book. So I wrote this book on content marketing um, about three years ago, actually, when I dove into it. I'm working on the next one that hopefully will be out around October. Uh, and I do all that really cool stuff. And we're an agency in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I'm going to talk about primarily these four things, uh, which are the most common SEO mistakes. And I thought I would start with that with a few slides to kind of set up the rest of this, uh, talking about a penalty. Uh, how many of you in here are actual SEOs? I'm assuming most of you are in a link building session. Uh, how many of you are actually link builders? Or used to be? <laughs> how many used to be link builders? Not too many. How many want to be link builders? What are you doing here? Yeah. All right, maybe you will. I'm done. So, uh, and our links still important. What, uh, what does work and what does work? And I'm going to have to keep turning around because I am a wanderer, and I know the presentations over here like a normal professor would stand and preach to you all the time, but I can't do that. So here's a slide, and this is pretty much hopefully why you're here, is nobody wants to be past page one of Google, right? So the most common things that, that we tend to find are uh, unintentional, uh, this is Clients come to us these days primarily for content marketing. That, that's usually how they engage us. Some will engage us for SEO slash link building. But every time somebody comes to us, we'll generally do a pretty quick uh, look at their site from an SEO perspective. And I'll tell you why in a couple of slides. And, and these are things we commonly find. So unintentional duplicate content, duplicate title, meta tags, whether that really affects your SEO rankings or not, it's still important to clean those up. Uh, blocked pages or entire uh, block sites, which is would seem like how does that possibly happen, but it does happen. Uh, and then, uh, of course, over over optimization of anchor text and and uh, those Google guys, and, uh, the animals that kind of take care of that. So this is an email I got internally. Somebody got a hold of me after one of these asked me. Uh, they were actually coming to the United States. They had a bunch of money to spend on developing content. They wanted to content marketing for the American audience, so on and so forth. Uh, so I gave it to one of our SEOs said, hey, can you take a quick look at the site? Or do a proposal, and you see what's going on. And this is a summary of the email that was sent back to me about, whoa, basically this is, whoa, you know, they're not ready at all for content. And if you read this, I mean, it's pretty, it's actually pretty serious, if you can read it. But you know, made, you know, I do believe content, the biggest thing, there's uh, the second bullet that was highlighted in yellow, there are 245 pages with less than 200 words. Some of them say coming soon. I don't know why anybody was going to do that these days. Um, that's all. They're all in the Google index. Uh, every single page, I believe it says, uh, had uh, the exact same uh, title tag and meta description, and some of them were uh, even blank. 48% um, have duplicate H1s. So, I mean, it's just, just kind of a mess. Um, yet they were ready to throw a bunch of money uh, to put content on there, and you can do that until whatever, you invest a bunch of money, but it still is going to help you search. And uh, this is another one. This is a, a, a Lee talked a lot about content marketing world, and uh, this actually is one of the big name speakers that usually goes there. Uh, I was, uh, he spoke in some city, we were pretty good friends, and I was taking him back to his hotel, 
And uh, he said, uh, you know, I've got this problem. I'm, I'm working with a client. We do the same methodology over and over from a content perspective, but it's not working. We're five months in, can't figure it out. Every other client works just fine, working, you know, what do you think? So I'll have to take a look at this thing. Literally, in 60 minutes, we found this kind of stuff, which was duplicate content, same issues with title tags, so on and so forth. One of the most shocking ones, if this laser works, is this one right here, which I don't, we rarely see this kind of a thing, but 100% um, of their image content and 45% of their other content was actually posted on another website. I mean, it's crazy. They were just grabbing the link from it, so but, but and, and, and you know not actually moving the content and using the content and posting on their site. So when the Google bots crawl on their site, it thinks a bunch of their content actually is on another domain. Um, so we we pointed all this out, wrote the report, fixed it, and or not fixed it, they fixed it. And within about two weeks, all of a sudden they started seeing many 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 more pages in the Google index. They started ranking for more, and it turned things around for this whole content marketing plan. So I know we're here to talk about links and most of the bad boys. Um, and one of the biggest things that's happening these days, uh, I have no idea how many of you, if you're an agency, if you're probably going into this with your clients, my guess would be that somebody, one of your clients probably got penalized over the last year or two. Um, if they have, you probably weren't trying hard enough. <laughs> so anyways, there's a couple ways to tell if you've been penalized. One is if you see this, happening to your, your analytics, or the more blatant way is you actually have a message in your Google Webmaster account that tells you this. Um, and Google does tell you, especially if you have a manual, oh, if you have a manual penalty, they'll tell you and they'll tell you what the penalty is and how you've got to work to undo it. Um, and it can get fixed. Sometimes it takes a long time, sometimes it can be a quick turnaround, but you can fix these penalties. And most of it centers around the links that are pointing to your site. Um, it is a real pain in the butt to fix, but to fix a manual penalty, you basically have to focus on removing uh, links, it has to be your highest priority, um, you have to be extremely thorough, something we've learned now, I don't know how many of you've done this for different clients, I mean, you know, it's funny, I don't know work if, for agencies where you're on the curve, I think it really peaked for us maybe, maybe December, January of this year, where we're just getting calls, people saying, oh my god, my crap is small and a half, or I've lost, you know, 70 grand. And some of these calls are painful to take and hear. And of course, they're moving from, you know, they're, they're calling us because the last agency was bad agency. <laughs> so, of course, we say, yeah, some part time goes to them, all that, you know, rotation thing. But we learned how to clean them up. And I will say that uh, in going through this, we've had some that we, we literally get them unhooked in the first attempt with Google. Some will take three or four attempts. But we have really learned you've got to take a machete to these bad, if you have bad backlinks. And bad, bad backlink, backlink pretty much is uh, you've got too much exact match anchor text pointing at your website. And, and you know, these are things that worked years ago. I, I don't have any hard feelings for anyone who's done this or anybody we might have done it for five years ago as a link building agency. I and mean, that's what the work that's what people were paying us to do, and we did it. Um, now we have to clean it up. Um, but I do want to uh, say, you need to be, it, it is, it, uh, if you're at all concerned about this, I'm not going to spend too much time on, on this part, but um, it, it, I just want to emphasize that this is a really manual, detailed process. If you try to take shortcuts and you submit your request into Google and your disavow file and all that stuff, um, if you haven't been pretty darn thorough, it's probably going to come back and you've got to do it again and again and again. So, um, uh, yeah. and again, <laughs> Uh, tell them the truth. Uh, the moment, is anybody doing this for your clients now? Sending this about files. I will tell you one thing I learned that I didn't know. And I don't actually do this for our agency, but, but I still didn't know this. I just heard this uh, at SMX a couple of weeks ago. Is when you submit your second or third disavow file, um, they really need to be uh, pen, uh, pended to the original ones. Because if you actually leave links off of the, if you think you submit them on the first one and the second one you go and submit it again, and you leave some of the links off that were in the original one, Google's going to think, oh, you want those links back. But they did not know that, if you follow what I just said. So, so question. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> sure. Is your experience that the disavow process by itself can work and does work? Not by itself. I mean, not totally by itself, but I've never seen it work without the disavow. Because you also have to go out and try to get 
trying to move on. What was that? You also need to go on just trying to get, get down to the right. 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 And actually, uh, this is, well, I guess I have two books. This is the first one. If you want, you can go to our home page, which is birthmeasures.com, and we have about a 30-page uh, complete Google recovery kit with Excel templates and everything else that you can get for free. You just download it there. It's a great piece of content. Uh, but that will walk you through the whole process. It tells, it tells you how to do it. So if you, if you have issues or, or work with clients or whatever, that's the easiest thing to do. All right, so I'm here to talk about links. Um, and uh, I'll march through this slide relatively quickly, too. These are pretty much all quotes from Matt Cuss. Uh, who, does everybody know who Matt Cuss is? When I say Matt Cuss, who? He's a uh, um, he, These are quotes from him probably in the last 60 or 70 days or whatever it is. Real quick quotes. Basically, in his videos or wherever it is that he's uh, in, the, you know, in tweets or whatever, where he's talking about links do still really matter. And we see this. And I, 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 uh, I don't even defend the whole link building too much. I, I think it's all really, really changed. And, and I'll be talking a lot, a, lot, a lot about that. And I mentioned I was at anybody at SMX Advanced a couple weeks ago in here. So you saw this whole thing. <laughs> you know, the whole hummingbirds growing up. Growing up hummingbirds and pandas and penguins and all that, but even in that session, he iterated once again that links actually still are really, really important to the algorithm. They actually have a test algorithm where they try to uh, do rankings without links, and it, and it just doesn't work. I mean, and it's baked into their system. And I've been saying this for years that um, you know, ever since Google became a public company, uh, and, and like you see with Facebook and everybody, any company that becomes public, it all is about revenue and profits. Then. I mean, I don't care what they said, and, and, and I don't care what their, their passions are, whether their leadership and their CTOs, they now have shareholders. And so they're not going to just totally disrupt their algorithm for the sake of changing the algorithm because they don't want links anymore. They just can't make that kind of a big mistake. So uh, what doesn't work anymore? Uh, any link that you have to actually pay for pretty much is gone, uh, and anything you think you can scale. And what I mean by pay for is actually offering this, the webmaster, the SEO or the website owner, some money to link to your web page. Um, you know, it used to work. That used to be a revenue stream for websites. It does not work anymore. I mean, if you find someone who's actually willing to take your money for, to do that, you might want to warn them that it's probably not a good idea because then they want that link. And then anything that scales, anything that's spam related or blog networks or, you know, anything. Uh, that you used to be able to do it in some volume at scale, it just does not work anymore. Uh, the consequences are that link building is a lot harder today, uh, which means it's a lot more expensive, uh, either in dollars if you pay a company like ours or whatever to do it, or if you spend the time yourself, it's a lot more hours. Uh, and so basically, the big days of paying a webmaster to link to your uh, product pages or your uh, category pages or whatever it is that you have a very hard time getting links to are pretty much over. And, and actually, I feel really bad for the small businesses because uh, it's, just, it's just a whole different model. Um, so in turn, uh, so what, what does work? I'm going to talk about four things now in order to get links to your website that actually still really works. Uh, and one that I think is overlooked a lot that I constantly uh, remind our, our, our staff and uh, to, to remind our clients uh, and we actually have built a couple tools to look for this and to figure out how we can help. It's just internal links. I mean, if they're free, you are in total control of them. They actually really, really work. They should be just part of navigating your user through your website. Uh, I don't remember all the bullets I have up here, but, but, but basically, you know, something you don't want to abuse, and I'm not talking about links in the, in the wrapper of your site, especially in the footer. I'm talking about from the content, from the text on certain pa on pages of your site, linking to a very appropriate page, uh, you know, other page on your website. Um, don't forget to do that. Uh, it's really, I mean, the, the bot follows all those links, you get credit for it, especially if you link from a really nice juicy page on your site to another page, it can be really good for you. So I would go back and look for opportunities like that, and, and also you can actually use uh, a decent anchor text in this case because it's on your domain. Uh, so I, I would look, look to do that. Uh, brand mentions. So basically, I have one slide on this. But if you go to this beautiful Moz post, it's a great job of reviewing one of the patents that I uh, were issued to, uh, to Google. And in the patent, it's talking about brand mentions. And, and I want to be kind of clear on this. I'm going to talk about brand mentions from two different perspectives. 
But this whole piece here talks about creating content. Like, let's just say you want to rank for Dog color. <laughs> we need to talk about that later. We spent a little bit too much time researching dog color. But, uh, so anyway, uh, so let's say with dog collars and you are a uh, pet retailer, what your brand is associated, if, if the phrase dog collars appears a lot out in content near your brand name, whatever, you know, petstore.com, um, that, that's what this is talking about. That Google is looking for that. And now maybe you're going to rank for dog collars, even though no one's linking to you with that word, that, that phrase, but you're constantly being mentioned uh, within you know, maybe a few words or you know, whatever might be the same sentence your brand is the same sentence as, as dog collars and so on and so forth. So that's what that is. And you can, if you just go to that link, you can read all about it. But I just summarized. So link outreach. I'm going to spend uh, several slides on that, um, and it is the hardest thing in the world to do. This is, this is the hard part. Clients still hire us on a pretty routine basis to do this. Um, I would say generally today, I'll probably talk about this in a couple of other slides, the clients that come to us, we are finally managing to convince them to do link attraction and link outreach. The link outreach, they're hiring us, and you might want to do this, because it's the only, about the only way you can actually like, guarantee to get some good links if you really want to build uh, uh, domain authority, you know, authority for your own domain. And, and we do this all the time. I'm going to basically now walk you through our process if you want to do it yourself. Um, so one of the keys is you have to have something worth linking to. Second key is you have to have something worth linking to. And it's also the third most important thing. It really is. I mean, if a client hires us today, says, I really need you to get the uh, you know, links to this page, and it's a, you know, it's a personal injury lawyer, and it's all done about their personal injury practice, and it's me, 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 piece of content. I mean, we literally have to say no these days, because you just can't do it. I mean, you know, uh, our job as is, is doing link outreach is to go to some webmaster, some owner of a website, some whatever, and say, I've got this really nice thing I, I think that would be valuable for your readers to link to. Again, we're not offering any payola, any anything. It's just you're, we need, we're, we're out there in a sales fashion, trying to get links back to your site or this lawyer site. Got to have some a reason to do it. Um, you also, if you're going to do the job I'm going to describe, you need to really understand advanced search commands, advanced search operators. That's key. Uh, real well crafted outreach emails. I'll show you an example of, of one of ours. And as I've already talked about, you've got to have a sales attitude. I actually wrote a blog post on this, I don't know, five or six years ago. And I think it was titled something like, uh, an SEO is not a link builder, and a link builder is not an SEO. And I started this big debate in the comments about, what do you worry about? Uh, you know, SEOs are good link builders and all that. And I just said, no, I think the mentality is totally different. I think, you know, classic SEO, was, uh, and, and maybe a, 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 a web dev person, I mean, they're, they're technical, they're geekier, they're, they're, uh, they, they want to build it and see the results. Link building doesn't work that way. Link building gets a lot of rejection. I mean, you're reaching out, you're constantly trying to, to talk to people, and, and, and you might not even ever really see much of the results from your labor. You build a link, and maybe a few months later, it helps push you up to page one or, or whatever. So it's just, just different. And with our staff, though, and because we view it this way, we actually pay bonuses for when they get links for clients. Uh, and, and so they do that more right then. So some of the advanced search operators, and there's a list of them, and, and if you really are going to leave your all fired up about link building, you do this yourself, um, you should probably Google search operators and learn some of them. These are common ones, you know, any URL, site, any URL for uh, .org sites, or all in titles, we're looking for resource pages, maybe we're looking for, uh, we'll use searching for associations, Society or association, but not Wikipedia.org. We don't want those results coming back. So, you know, doing those kinds of searches. Um, and so, we uh, I'll show you examples of some of those search operators. It's pretty basic, but, but but you do these searches until you find these candidates that might be interested in linking to your content. And then you have to research and find a person to contact. And uh, we send emails as long as this and as detailed as this. Again, when we're doing it as we're, we're selling. It's like a, it's almost like actually very similar to uh, PR. All right? And I think that's how we've been operating for a long time on our higher end links is 
you're really promoting, you know, we're out there promoting our client sites to different sites. And we're trying to get them to link to it because it's a really cool piece of content or it's a great piece of information, whatever it is. Uh, and, and these people are doing this freely. We're just making them aware of our client's website and, and, and the specific piece of content. So outreach best practices, you gotta find the right contacts. So you, just like in a sales role, you gotta take the time to find the best person to reach out to. Um, we do use social media a lot. So if they actually find a website owner or, or whoever's in charge of this piece of content, if they say who the author is or whatever, we'll see if we can find them on Twitter, uh, find them on LinkedIn, we'll maybe retweet some of their stuff for a while, maybe we'll retweet the page we're gonna target, uh, we'll make sure they kind of notice us, and then we'll we'll pay with that email. Um, and when we send that email, which, oh, I forgot to say this too, I'm going to very soon that this all works right I'm in the right time zone, tweet out these slides. So we'll have access to all these slides, because there's a lot of slides that just have written content on uh, that, that you might want later. Um, so I uh, like that email template, you'll see. But we try to never use the word link when we're reaching out to get a link. Um, you know, we're always uh, talking about things like, like a brand dimension, or would you be interested in, in uh, sharing this website or webpage with your viewer, your, your users and visitors, and so on and so forth. So I already talked about the detail. Uh, we also periodically do brainstorming meetings, and, and uh, Kayla, who runs this department, calls them, calls them, they turn those into yes meetings. So the link builders will get together and say, you know, I got rejected here, or they won't link to this, or whatever. Uh, you know, what else can we do to maybe convince them, because it's, you know, it's a really good, good asset that maybe they want to link to. Uh, follow up and test, test, test. So has anybody in here been in the sales game before? So you can relate to this kind of a process. That's the analogy I can give you. Um, so something else we do, I'm going to mention laws a couple times. We use the laws tools here. Is uh, Now I'm talking about brand mentions for a different reason. Uh, we will use Google Alerts or uh, Fresh Web Explorer, and we'll set up alerts with them for our clients' brand names. And basically, we're searching for where brands, your brands are mentioned but not, they're not linking to you. And it's one of the easier links to go get. I mean, someone's already written about an article or done whatever, and, and they're talking about you, so uh, now you've, you've, got, you've got the door open to go to talk to them about it, and you turn that into a link. And here's an example. Uh, this is a, a, a client, or we got a link for a client on Cranes in Chicago. I, I don't even know who the client is. Didn't know. Uh, but we got them a link on you know, DA84, that's a, a Moz ranking, a PR7. Uh, it was live in two and a half weeks. And Kayla, who I mentioned already, runs this team, wrote a really good post on how to go out and get brand mentioned. So if you go to that link, you can read a whole, whole uh, post that we created on, on how to go find brand mentions and how to get them to, to turn those into links. Um, and so something else that we do, I talked about the search operators. So uh, you know, people generally, they, they contact us, they say, oh, we want links from doc, .edu's and .govs. And so we'll target them because those seem to be pretty good links. And, and it's a big chunk of what we do. But .coms can be really good, .mil for military, whatever. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, just focus on these, even though they, you know, they seem to be the most authoritative. But, you know, people wonder, well, will .edu's and .govs link to us? And here's just a couple, uh, well, actually, here's, I'm sorry, I got two slides there. Uh, so, if we're going to go look for pages um, on an EDU site where on the, in the URL the word links was mentioned, or down here a uh, gov site where the word links is mentioned, if you just do that search, there's almost 600,000 pages that meet that qualification. I realize you've got to start narrowing it down a little bit uh, beyond <laughs> that. Uh, and the same thing with gov, there's 70,000 pages where in the URL we're talking about links. And so, uh, and so uh, some of the things they may actually be linking out to about that we find all the time it is all listed here. And you'll, you'll get these slides, and, um, so you, you, you can go through them. And actually, we had two pages of, of reasons that uh, EDUs and .govs link out to other sites. And all you can tell they're all over the board. Curriculum resources, career guides, student resources, the link to nonprofits, equal friendly stuff. You know, this business directory is free. You offer know, discounts to schools. That's another good trip to, to, to use. So you can do that. 
Uh, so here's another example. So using just that kind of a search operator, so looking for eat.edu's and it links in the URL. We found this one on Fredonia, got a link for our client. Uh, it literally went live in one hour. And that's a score. That's, that's about as good as it gets. It was on a page with the PR6. Um, so but that's, that's the process. That's, that's more or less how it works. Right, we have one more. Um, so this is anywhere else. So looking for resource pages. So you can search for uh, you know, resources like this or maybe helpful dash resources. You know, there's 14 million pages that have resources in the URL. And here's 22,000 that have helpful dash resources in the URL. So it'll help you find these places to get a link from. And so here's an example on a DA91 PR5. This one took a little longer. It was requested on, on March 18th, went live on April 24th. But it's a really sweet link uh, to our client site. And this was a resource page that linked to a resource that our client was providing. Uh, can you go back one slide just for one quick second? I hope I can. Yes. Okay. Is there a stay? No. <laughs> All right, so that's the result. So, uh, I, again, our whole, our, as vertical as, our, as an agency, our whole view of link building has certainly changed over the last eight years. And, and, and we're, I, I mentioned PR earlier, and we really look for links that are going to drive traffic to a client's site. I mean, that's ultimately, ultimately, I think that's what you're doing if you're actually manually out trying to get links that are in a winning situation. And this email actually was just sent out uh, internally on 620. So I fortunately grabbed it, threw it into the slide deck, and then sent the slide deck to Paul a couple days later. Uh, what this is, is this a single link that we got for a client um, that resulted in 2,000 visits to the client's site, but even better yet, that single link, link gave this client 160 leads. And that's, that's what it's all about now. I mean, if you're, you know, you're going to pay us the kind of money we charge for link building, you want some results. <laughs> but I will tell you, this pay, this, this 160 leads, I mean, just think if they, if they were normally, this, in this case, they were normally paying about 100 or $200 to lead. That covers a lot of link building expense. If you hit one, I mean, you know all of these, right? And of course, I'm going to show you some of the best examples. But um, I mean, that, that's that's what you look for. Uh, uh, not just to get a link to get a link, but to get a link for a purpose and, and hopefully traffic and hopefully leads. All right, so other good methods. Actually, Lee talked about this, uh, you know, uh, writing for other blogs or other websites. Become a columnist. Become an author somewhere else. Um, you know, I do this for about three, you know, the very first slide I showed you, I write for uh, LinkedIn. Uh, actually, right now I'm writing every week for LinkedIn. Uh, on LinkedIn, I uh, write for uh, uh, Marketing Land every month and Content Marketing Institute every month. So every month we are getting traffic and links from those really reputable sites. Um, where you have relationships, and I know this one doesn't get used very often. Um, we could probably even use it for ourselves a little, a little better than we do. Um, but if you have uh, partners and suppliers, and I don't know what all industries you're in or your clients are in, but if they're buying a lot of products from somebody, you might have the leverage to go back to them and say, could you write an article about this topic and link to us? Or I'm going to give you an article. I'd really appreciate it if you post it on your website and link to us. Or you know, you have a preferred vendors page and we're not listed there. I mean, so look at your partners and suppliers who you have a relationship with and just see if there's opportunities there. The one thing I would coach today that's different than I would have said two years ago is do not tell them how to link to you. Or we used to dictate that. You know, say, oh, I love it. They link to us for content marketing resources or whatever it is, but don't don't do that. Let them link to you however they think is is appropriate. You might say I'd like the link to go to this page, but let them let them determine how it happens. Uh, and directories are still good, especially for local businesses. Maybe even like the yellow page directory or, or you know, wherever it is that makes sense. Don't, don't spam directories, but if you can get in some directories, it's a good thing to do. You might get some traffic from that. Uh, so basically, bottom line is you know, trusted sites and given to you editorially, meaning there was no payola. You know, they gave you the link because they, they felt like the page you asked them to link to was worth linking to and, and a good page for their website business. All right, so. Um, Actually, so actually, I don't see Josh. But when Josh reached out to me and asked me if I would present, 
I assumed he was asking me to come here and talk about content marketing. That's what I do. <laughs> Uh, so what I write about and all that, but I, you know, I know Bert Lewis has a link building uh, practice and we're uh, probably one of the few that, that really still do and do it in a pretty meaningful way. He said, no, I'm going to talk about link building. I said, okay, I said, and so I was thinking about getting ready for this, and I thought, I'm going to try to get through a whole presentation then and only talk about links and not mention content marketing. But it's impossible. I mean, it, it is literally impossible. And Dean and I were chatting earlier that before we got up, and I, I don't think there's a presentation you'll see today. I don't know. But I'm going to guess that you can't get through one without somebody talking about awesome content, engaging content, you know, whatever buzzword in front of content and content marketing. Because it is at the core of what we do. So when somebody comes to us and asks us if we, if we can build links for them, uh, we always try to convince them that what I'm going to show you is the best way to go about it. And I will say, Lately, I mean, maybe only in the last six months we are finally getting their attention and they're starting to say yes. Or for two years, I think they would come back to us and say, no, no, no. You know, I just want you to build links to you know these pages and blah blah blah. You know, we say, okay. But finally, I think now that the tide has turned, people are getting educated about content marketing, content, useful content, whatever, all those words. Um, and so what I pretty much say, and uh, is that uh, the concept is you got to just keep getting up to the plate. And if anybody's ever seen Moneyball, who's seen Moneyball? You know, what concept? Hitting, hitting singles, right? And I know people say, I want a viral video, or I want a viral piece of content, I want to you know, blah, blah, blah. And it just, you can't make it happen. It just doesn't happen. Just like you can't make a grand slam happen. I mean, everything has to happen perfectly first for you. You know, you know if you want to be green bases first, just do all the tricks. Then maybe, maybe you get the home and you get grand slam. And I would say that one link I showed you that got the 160 leads, it would fall into you know a home run or maybe a two run, maybe a grand. I mean, actually, a client, I'm sure it thinks it was a grand slam. Well, but there's a lot of links you built from that didn't, didn't generate that. You just have to keep at it. So uh, how you do that is basically this this process, and, and this is an eight step process I covered in this book, um, and, and I won't uh, actually have a plug at the end about workshops. So every client we engage, we try to talk them through and be a part of these eight steps. The one I'm just going to talk to you really quickly, very quickly about is ideation, how to come up with content ideas. Um, I li literally, in the workshop, we will spend an hour or two hours literally teaching just the ideation process. At the end of that process, you'll have hopefully a spreadsheet of hundreds of ideas that look like this. You're sort of deciding on what content you want to focus on. Get it into an editorial calendar, right? How many of you have an editorial calendar that you know your organization is great? I mean, two years ago, almost no one would have raised their hand, so this is working. If you don't have it or you want this template, you can get the template at birkenwise.com slash calendar. You don't have to give your email or an end name or anything, you just download the templates. And you'll have to adjust them for yourselves. But anyway, so you have this content template, and hey, I managed to work this in. So uh, this is really cool. You have a Super Bowl coming. And the reason I'm mentioning this is. Uh, where I tend to get brought into client situations is the whole ideation process. It's probably what I end up specializing in. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll hear it a lot. We've been on the right about, we're boring, blah, blah, you know, our industry sucks. It's all been pretty, every excuse in the world I've heard. And I can't think of a single time in three years that, that we haven't been able to generate dozens and dozens and almost always hundreds and hundreds of ideas to create content around that actually will work. Um, and one of the things I would suggest to all of you, if you have an editorial calendar, most of you raise your hand, I realize this is the ways off, but get this into your editorial calendar. This is a huge event that's coming to town that is going to be talked about. And, and just, and, and what I'll relate to, I'm stuck around town. Okay, okay. Um, you can tell, probably. You'll tell in about five minutes how panic don't get. Finish on time. I have most panic. Uh, anyway, so this was, uh, when I was in San Francisco, uh, San Francisco, I don't know if they're, they're done yet or not, but they're building their new stadium, you know, like you are, and I think there's just finished, all that, and, and I was actually speaking at a hotel conference, and the lady, actually, actually happened over a lunch table, she's talking and she's complaining that uh, she owns a, a, a boutique hotel, uh, maybe a hundred, hundred room hotel, and it's the closest hotel to the new stadium that's being built in Santa Clara. And she's complaining because I think it was Hilton and you know Marriott or whatever had bought all the property and they're breaking ground and they're planning on building these hotels and she's going to get crushed. 
And I just said to her, you know, if I was you, what I would start doing that they can't do right now is I'd start creating content all around this new venue that's coming in, that's being built. I would talk about all the traffic routes to the venue. I would talk about all the parking near the venue, the restaurants that are being built near the venue. I would just, I would write a hundred blog posts before they ever break ground. And I would own every search that people are going to search for because of this new stadium. And I think you guys should, whatever, whatever business you're in, think about this. You know, you've got a new venue, you've got a, a huge event coming. Some, somebody in here can own all the searches that are going to relate to this. And that's my uh, one hour ideation in three <laughs> minutes. So, now I'm just going to talk about uh, how to attract links through content. And I'm going to narrow it down to my three favorite pieces of content that do attract links. And you notice earlier I gave examples of searching for resource pages. Well, if you create resource pages, they are really good, and I hate to use that word link bait, but they, they really do attract links. And people tend not to want to create resource pages. I hear a lot of excuses like, well, once they get to this page, all it is is links going out to other places. Well, yes, it is. But, but let's remember where they are when they're reading your resource page. Where are they? Right, they're on your website, so you've already won. I mean, they're already there. It's up to your website and the wrapper and everything else to get that conversion. But if they're reading your resource page, it's pretty much done the job, right? So consider building resource pages. The next one is infographics. I know they're really, really hot. I'm not a huge fan, actually, of infographics. Um, I don't think they're very highly converting. And if you know me, if you become a client of ours, I mean, all we talk about is, you know, uh, large or small business, is the conversions what matters, right? I mean, nobody hires us because they don't care if the revenue goes up, or if we don't have to justify what they're spending on us. They want to know if this is paying off. And almost always it, it turns into, we've got to show that we're driving leads or sales for a client. Maybe, maybe, uh, sometimes just traffic. Um, and infographics are good at uh, driving traffic, and they're also really good at attracting links. And it's one of those things, and again, we're talking about links right now. So it's one of those things that if you're actually out reaching out to other websites, you can say, hey, look, we've got this really cool infographic. I found this page on your site that you might want to link to it. And, and so people will tend to link to it. They'll grab an embed code and maybe post it on their site, which should put a link back to you. So infographics can be good for that. But my absolute very favorite is case studies, white papers, free guides. Um, if every single one of our clients would, would, uh, would uh, whatever that's called, take the bait and run, <laughs> whatever it is with us, and do this, um, I just think they'd all be a little bit more, a little bit happier. I mean, they have three really big benefits. They do attract links. Um, they generate leads all by themselves because if you set them up correctly, you'll have a little lead form for them to get this free guide. It could be as simple as a name and email address. Like, you'll have to give us if you want that Google penalty recovery kit. Uh, or it could be a little more expensive if you feel like you need to gather more information. And they have a really long lifespan. For example, this golf guide, career golf guide, we created for this golf school client um, now about seven years ago. They got acquired, so we had to freshen it and uh, cover the logo and change the logo. We had to freshen some of the content, change the front cover. And that's all we've done. We built it seven years ago, we refreshed it about three years ago, and it has been downloaded more than 10,000 times. I mean, it just keeps giving. And now they do focus some advertising towards it, and so on and so forth, but I'm just talking about the investment in the content was paid for way years and years ago, and it just keeps working. And so now I'm going to walk you through, uh, I forget what time I am actually in. Yeah. Did I have to end in five minutes? Five minutes ago. <laughs> ten minutes ago? No, no. In, in, in 9.30. 9.30, you're done. All right, so <laughs> uh, Yale Appliance Center in Boston. I don't know if anybody's ever heard this story before, but Yale Appliance Center, regular old appliance store, like many of you have seen, you've gone, you bought the washer and your dryer there. That's their home page. They have went all in with content marketing. And uh, this is basically how it works. And this, I'm giving this example because it's the free guide model. And, and again, uh, we do this for clients. We would love to talk to you about it. If not, you should do this. Do this. Because uh, you all have a way to do a free guide or white paper or whatever. So they create blog posts. And at the bottom of every blog post, they have an image that looks, oh, oh my gosh, this is a very valuable time. 
<laughs> they have an image that looks like this. Every blog post take, has, takes them to a free guide. It's a clickable thing, and, and they get to the form, and they have to fill out a little short form to get this, you know, it's a washing machine buyer guide, right? Who would have, you know, I bet most of you wouldn't have thought an appliance store could create a lot of buyers guides. They have dozens of them. Refrigerators, washers, dryers, microwaves, whatever it is you're thinking about, they have a buyer's guide for. The end result is that even though these are huge numbers at the top, the traffic more almost quadrupled from 40,000 visitors to 150,000 visitors. Their leads have almost or more or almost tripled from 800 to 2,300 leads per month. Their revenue is up 40 percent. And when I talk to Steve, the owner, the thing that he's of course happiest about is their profits are up actually more than that because they've been able to eliminate some other marketing expenses. Like Lisa, you know, whatever it was in five years, most people are moving to digital marketing, so they're migrating off their traditional, and of course, he loves content marketing now. Um, and, and if you do it, it takes a little while, but it happens over and over and over. And what we've been finding is it takes about five or six months that you start a content plan, and you start blogging, and you do the free guides or any other kind of uh, larger pieces of content, it will work for you. Um, and it's a continuous process, and link building comes in. Well, if you work with us, we uh, bring in an optimization and content promotion steps of our eight steps. Um, and if you don't think it works, I actually went to five of the speaker sites uh, to get this slide. And here's how many links that uh, Moz, what's it called, the disk was just discovered on Moz. So these are how many links showed up, new links showed up on these sites in the last 60 days. So uh, Eric's site, Stone Temple, 76, our site, 166, Top Rank, 208 links, Word Street, 394, and Moz, 920 links, brand new links, coming to their domain uh, in the last 60 days, and I guarantee none of us are actually doing anything that we consider a link building, traditional link building. So it does work. Here's my plug. Um, we teach a half a day and a full day in a two-day content marketing workshop. I think they do a great job with it. Uh, you can mark on the card if you want it. And now we do the raffle. Oh, you know, they get all of you are tolerating the raffle and me and everything being late and all that. Um, you can get Accelerate, this book, in a Kindle fashion for free until midnight tonight if you go to Amazon. Just go to Amazon, search for Accelerate, the press cover, or my name, or whatever, and you'll be able to get it for free until midnight. That's what that tweet is. I'm going to tweet that out as well. And now we do the raffle because I think I'm done. <laughs> Someone who claimed to be a, a black hat link builder. Um, and essentially, what he was saying, and it's been a long time since I've worked out on the agency side, uh, and he, he's a consultant that helps build links. And what he said, a lot of companies are doing, and I know it's around, but I'm just wondering what your, your perspective on it is, but bigger brands that essentially have their main primary flagship site. And then, you know, obviously, everything's great to those sites, no, nothing black hat, nothing bad, you just like that, so, you know. On the, but then they put up these microsites um, that are, are very niche specialty, build a lot of crappy links to them, max it out, get rid of the site, build up another one, do it. And redirect or whatever. Not even oh, yeah, and redirect. Yeah, yeah just, right. you know, yeah. wash and repeat. Have, have you seen, do you still see a lot of that? And where do you see the future? No, we don't see a lot of that. Uh, I think, what was the last part of the question? I, I don't see a lot of that. And oh, I'm just wondering if you, if you, if you see a lot of it. Like, so I can't think of thought. I think that's crap. I wouldn't do it. Um, I really do. I just think it, I've never been a black hat. I mean, like a black hat guy. I have built a bunch of standing links that I'm very sorry for doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I mean, I've never done any computer-generated link building. Any. I've never built microsites uh, to, to just basically waste. I, I just think uh, part of it, what you have to do is be a good citizen on the web yep. as well. And just build good stuff and you will win. And Google's, Google's really smart. And that, that might work for a couple months and get them all excited, but eventually it'll fail. 
Yeah, he, was listed, he was listed on Rip Off Report, so it was all good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, good to see you again. Yeah. Uh, all right. I work in a regulated industry, medical devices, mm -hmm. and trauma. They are so scared about asking people to link back to their uh, properties for, I don't think, for some very good reasons. Do you have any, anything to say to those um, have you run into that? With oh, we run into it all the time. We actually uh, almost are steering clear of the healthcare industry because actually it's funny. We used to say we're going to start pricing things based on how many lawyers we have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, because it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. And I, I don't know. I don't have like a quick 30 second answer other than if you don't have a competitor, probably yes. And you've got to just lighten up sometimes. Uh, but I know that doesn't work with lawyers and the regulators and all that. And we do a lot with schools and uh, universities, and it's kind of the same thing that you know, uh, they're regulated, and we have to be careful that you can't promise a job when you graduate and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, you must do it. If someone's going to have to just give me the hook, or that what your job is, <laughs> I don't know if we're supposed to get a 10 or one more question. Can you share any best practices about internal linking and also the other thing on internal link sculpting? People say it's a godsend, other people say it's spammy. Yeah, well, I, don't, I wouldn't consider it spammy, but the sculpting part, I wouldn't consider spammy. Um, I'm not, we don't do that for clients. We don't really try to work on sculpting. We just, I just think our whole attitude over the last year or two has really just been uh, totally over, just do what feels right and is natural and makes sense. And so, like, quick tips on internal links would just be where it makes sense. And so, just if you're reading your content, in a blog post or product page or any other like news group, any, anything that's posted on your site, and you think, oh, you know what, we might we should probably send them over to this page where we're covering that in more detail. Then then link from that that content and send them to that page. Do you uh, think it really matters? I mean I think is it, it really, really matters. that big of a difference yes. for your bottom line yes. for internal linking? Yes. Do you think it matters like your anchor text and trying to vary that and some of the same like external linking rules are the same? No, I, I think it's different, and I think you can get away with a little more exact match kind of anchor text internally than you can externally. And, and if you just think about it, you know, again, Google's really smart. External sites, if you don't tell them how to link to you, they're going to almost always link to your brand. I mean, use a brand. You know, they're going to say uh, vertical measures uh, content marketing agency or whatever, right? I mean, if you, you know, I mean, they're going to, uh, or whatever the uh, title of those places, or whatever it is, they're going to just link that way. But if it's your domain and then Google then knows you're actually managing the links, then it's okay to say, oh, here's a, a page on um, our content. You know, I'm talking, I'm, I'm writing a blog post and I talk about our workshop. And if I link to, from uh, using the word content marketing workshop to our content marketing workshop page, that makes perfect sense. Right? I mean, it's, it's my site, I'm in control. No one's paying me to do this. Uh, I'm sending to exactly the right page that, that makes sense for that reader, and, and so that's what I would. Well, I'm sorry. We're, I'll be here. We'd love to do it all. <laughs>